Agora TV. The world is thinking. I hope I've shown you at least a little bit of evidence uh, suggesting that languages really shape how we construct reality and they help make us as smart and sophisticated as we are. There's one thing that I do agree with Noam Chomsky on. Uh, he says, when we study human language, we're approaching what some might call the human essence, the distinctive qualities of mind that are, so far as we know, unique to man. Um, what I'd like to suggest is that if we take this idea that languages really differ from one another seriously, then each of those languages is creating a somewhat different human essence, a somewhat different way of being human, a somewhat different way of seeing the world and engaging with the world. Um, and that could be a potentially very exciting uh, insight. Now, you might think, uh, okay, uh, language profoundly, fun you're telling us it profoundly fundamentally shapes how we think, but sometimes uh, it just doesn't seem to work. Um, so here's an example. Um, people try to change uh, to affect some linguistic change, and it's just silly. Right, so here, U.S. Congress decides to uh, rename French fries into freedom fries. This is when France refused to go into the war in Iraq, uh, didn't want to join our coalition of the willing, and so this was their way of getting back at them. Right? Um, well, uh, and that, that seems stupid, right? I, but this is not new. So during World War I, for example, everything that had a German-sounding name uh, became Liberty something or other. Uh, there's a reason that these kinds of substitutions don't work, and it's because they're based on a wrong theory about how cognition and language relate to one another. So uh, words that you can simply replace one for the other in a language are synonyms. Right? So if two words can uh, equally go well into any phrase, that means they're, they have the same meaning, they're synonyms. And so when you make that kind of replacement, what you're saying is French is synonymous with freedom. Right? So French fries are freedom fries, French toast is freedom toast, French poodles are freedom poodles, French kissing is freedom kissing, and then you have freedom manicures. But what should we call France then? Freedom land? Uh, and French would be the language of freedom? Right? It's setting up the wrong kind of mapping. So what I want to suggest is if we understand really uh, how language and thought interact in the mind, we can even be nationalistic in a more effective manner. Uh, so if we really want to annoy the French, I say take all the things that the French hate and call them French. That will really annoy them. For example, ketchup becomes French sauce, McDonald's will be the French cafe, shorts will be French pants, mimosas will be French cocktails, Disneyland will be France. <laughs> Americans will be French people. The English language will be called French, and so on. That'll get them.